This is a mock interview conducted by Forum IS Academy at New Delhi. The interview panel includes eminent professors, retired bureaucrats and other luminaries. The objective of the program is to acquaint the candidate with the format and expectations of the personality test conducted by UPSC. May I come in, sir? Please come. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Sandeep. Yes, sir. Please sit down, Sandeep. Thank you, sir. So, Sandeep, you are from Pithoragad. Yes, sir. This is your sixth attempt. Yes, sir. So, what are you doing currently? Sir, uh, currently I have been preparing for civil services. And you passed out your B.Tech in 2017 from IIT Rookie. Yes, sir. So, since then you have been preparing for the civil services? Yes, sir. Uh, since then, I have been preparing for the civil services. But in 2020-21, I also uh, I also working for some freelance freelancing kind of job in one coaching institute. All right. When you say coaching, this means civil services coaching institute. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. You did mechanical engineering, but uh, you are taking mathematics. Why did you take mathematics as your option subject? Sir, uh, mechanical engineering was itself a very interesting subject. But the reason behind choosing mathematics for me was first, I have good guidance from one of my senior and he persuaded me to uh, take this subject. Second, I was also interested in mathematics. And third reason was that mathematics is considered as one of the highest scoring subject. So that was also one of the so reasons. So how did you fail? This is the first time you are uh, reaching to the level of uh, interview? No, sir. This is second time. So when did you appear for the interview last time? Sir, in CSE 2021. And how many marks did you obtain in 21? Sir, uh, 157. You think that was low on the on on your expectation? Yes, sir. Uh, that was based on my performance, I think. No, no, that's fine. But you thought that you could have scored better. Yes, sir. I could have scored better. So why was it low? Sir, uh, the reason behind that was first I was a bit nervous at that time, and other than that, I was I was not able to give good answer in the analytical based question. These were the two reasons, sir. So thereafter, you pulled up your socks and you have prepared yourself well. Yes, sir. All set to go now. Yes, sir. Wonderful. Very good. We observed that you had said that form team solstice, solstice at IIT Roorkee and led a NASA HERC in the USA. What is HERC? Sir, uh, HERC refers to the Human Exploration Rover Challenge. Human Exploration Rover Challenge. Rover challenge. Yes, sir. What is exactly this? Sir, uh, in this competition, we had to build a rover that should be able to traverse in the moon surface. Uh, and that there was 1.6 kilo, uh, 1.6 mile surface. And in that surface, we should have uh, the, our rover should be capable to traverse in that particular surface. And rover should be in that manner that it should be lightweighted. It should be completely human powered. That is based on the bicycle mechanism. And other than that, it should be also collapsible kind of rover. Very nice. So you got the first prize in that, sir. Uh, we didn't go. It we didn't get first prize, but we got a pit crew award. What is pit crew award, sir? Uh, actually, we didn't uh, transported our vehicle. We just carried out parts of our vehicle and we built our vehicle, uh, our rover in that arena. So for that, they gave us this award. Very good. Very good. Your father is an agriculturist. A whole lot of farmers are agitating. What is your assessment? of this agitation? Sir, uh, farmers uh, in the current time are agitating behind certain demands. Like first demand is regarding the legalization of MSP. So what do you think of this? Do you think that's a reasonable demand? Or do you think it is unreasonable demand? Do you think it is sustainable demand? Sir, uh, legalizing MSP have certain benefits. Like uh, it can it can have a regular income source to the farmers and price volatility will also be decreased in that case. But uh, it may not be sustainable in the future because first it will put the economic burden to the government. Uh, second one, it will uh, it will lead to the uh, conflict in the WTO norms uh, for India. And third, uh, it it can lead to the uh, food inflation in future. And uh, other than that, go government may not have that much capability to store such a uh, uh, such a huge amount of grains. 
All so, right. Okay. So when you are saying that we may not have that kind of storage capacity, yes. being an engineer that too from IIT Roorkee, can you say something so that uh, we can store these food grains without spending so much of money? Sir, uh, I think cold storage facilities can be one of the solution, and second one can be silos approach. Uh, these two I can think of, sir. But these will be done again by the government. Yes, sir. These infrastructure will be created by the government, silos and uh, you said uh, cold storages. Sir, that has been created by the government, but uh, that is not as per the requirement. Uh, can you think that we allow everyone to store energy, store uh, food grain? In his or her house or anywhere it is possible. Suppose you are storing four bags, I am storing ten bags, he is storing two bags, and then with the help of technology, we will have a tab on everyone, okay, how much storage has been done, and whenever it is required, it can be procured from them. Why? Tell me, you procure centrally, keep it centrally, and then when it is a question of distribution again, the same channel is being used. You Sir, distribute the food grain from the central place to all the places. Sir, uh, I think uh, the reason behind is that uh, the model which we have uh, using currently, that FCI related model, storage no, again, have... FCI will be the owner. Yes, sir. How do you store information today? How how do you use cloud computing or even internet? That pieces of information are available and distributed all over the world. And you call out that information. Similarly, the food grain will be available all over the country, and then you will be able to use it as and when required. Sir, uh, yeah, please I, go ahead. I think crypto uh, uh, blockchain technology can be feasible option in this regard. No, no, I'm talking about the storage. Cryptocurrency will not store physically. I'm talking about the storage of food grain physically. Oh, sorry, sir. I'm not able to think right Please. now. Sir, recently a tunnel collapsed in Uttarakhand. Before that, there was a case of land subsidence. Why, why is this happening and how to prevent this? Sir, uh, the recent cases uh, that uh, related to the land subsidence or tunnel collapsing is uh, behind the reason, uh, reason behind is that the rapid pace of development that we are doing in the Him Himalayas in Uttarakhand because uh, we want to have a development in that manner so that we, we, we will be able to cater all these challenges in minimum time frame. And along with, and for that, we are ignoring the safety measures like we, we are not doing the in proper environment impact assessment related things. And other than that, we are using the drill and blasting method and reason it's itself very fragile. So it is not sustainable but in China that manner. China has reached to our LSE border, right? Yes, sir. They have not faced such kind of problems. For, uh, sir, uh, because reason behind they is that cross whole Himalayas and these two are area. Sir, in that reason, uh, in that reason, the surface is flat in especially in the central region. If you will say in nearby Uttarakhand or Himachal Pradesh, and in in, in India part. Uh, so just look at China. China, China, Chinese have crossed Himalayas. They have reached to Pengakso Lake. So they have uh, created tunnels and everything. They have created very high quality roads. They have not faced any of such issues. Sir, uh, that is, I am telling that uh, we are not following that required engineering measures that we should have been followed. Like if in fragile region, if you will be using the blasting or such type of method, so that that thing will be there that it will be pro problematic for us now and in future also. Last year, there was a, a massive earthquake in Turkey. And then the scientists who had predicted the earthquake in Turkey has also predicted that similar, uh, I mean, earthquake of similar tu uh, tune is expected in India also, and that, that may happen anytime soon. So, considering that kind of warning, what suggestion would you give to the state government of Uttarakhand? Sir, uh, first uh, we should, uh, the sir, first important thing will be the vulnerability assessment. Uh, should be there and second important uh, that state government should follow the NDRF guidelines uh, related to the earthquake related things 
and uh, third import uh, third crucial thing will be increase um, massive afforestation in the within the region because uh, soil erosion kind of thing happens and fourth important measures can be uh, awareness uh, generation of awareness among the locals to deal with such kind of disasters in future right my last question to you why india has got a strained relationship with almost all its neighbors yes sir why india has got strained relationship with all its neighbors sir uh, currently the major uh, influence can be uh, currently the major issue is the influence of china among our neighbors like in maldives we have seen and similarly uh, nepal has signed the bri project with china so that is uh, one of the important reason and second uh, we have a uh, few of the issues with our neighbors like with nepal we, have, we we are having a border disputes so uh, this thing is also there and third our neighbor considers uh, as a big brother approach of india so these can be the probable reason due to which Why should you consider uh, you know india showing big, big, big brother's attitude sir uh, Uh, the apprehension among these countries are that uh, when we will be dealing with these particular country these smaller countries then uh, it it says that uh, they india's policy overpower them so that may be one Why of the reasons policy overpower them sir uh, because they are uh, to some extent they are dependent uh, on india in terms of uh, so you agree that actually india trying to you know overpower them no sir i don't agree with that because india has uh, brought a neighborhood first policy and we support uh, these countries other than that in recent budget we have allocated the higher amount to these countries and in terms of in various areas like in space diplomacy we are providing them space uh, technologies so india don't consider like that okay thank you thank you sir okay sandeep so you are from uttarakhand yes ma'am okay so tell me that uh, what is gender sensitizing okay so how can we manage gender on gender sensitization and how can we stop gender discrimination in our society ma'am uh, gender sen- sensitization refers to uh, increasing awareness related to the gender equality among the uh, male uh, towards the female and for increasing gender sensitization in society first uh, we can start with uh, within our society with within our education system that uh, we can have such kind of notions second uh, we can influence people by uh, by having a uh, by uh, by creating a mediums like movies or uh, such kind of things can be there and, uh, and third important thing if government will uh, provide a, a women empowerment schemes there also it can be done ma'am okay and how can we stop gender discrimination the same method we have to use yes ma'am i think same method you have to use in that okay okay so uh, you are also work in uh, 3d designing yes ma'am so tell me that 3d printing how can we see as a future perspective 3d printing in india ma'am uh, in india the scope of 3d printing is increasing uh, like in manufacturing sector we can say that uh, now industries are going for the additive manufacturing uh, kind of things and second government is also promoting 3d printing uh, recently government has launched national additive manufacturing policy and third important thing we are also doing higher research and development in the 3d printing uh, kind of thing and fourth uh, important thing is that within the universities we are establishing the 3d printing labs what is the benefit of 3d printing ma'am a uh, first benefit is that it provides a better designing ability uh, by having a better simulation we can make a product that is more durable and qualitative second it reduces the wastage amount uh, because in med- in additive manufacturing we use the few of the uh, we use very less amount of raw materials and third uh, we can have a higher economy of scale by having a 3d pr- printing related products okay okay so uh... you are also in work with nasa yes ma'am some work also with nasa so uh, so tell me especially maybe you are aware about the t- unmanned aerial vehicle yes ma'am so how is it uh, helpful especially for india now we are working on that uav yes ma'am so how is it helpful and in which sector it is helpful 
मैम यू एज आर हेल्पफुल इन वेरियस सेक्टर फर्स्ट इट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर अवर सिक्योरिटी रिलेटेड पर्पज हेयर वी कैन डू द रिकनाइसेंस एक्टिविटीज एंड अदर देन दैट रिमोट सेंसिंग कैन ऑल्सो भी डन सेकेंड इन एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर इट हैज़ हायर यूज बिकॉज इन रिसेंटली वेरियस स्टेट गवर्नमेंट हैज लाइक तमिलनाडु गवर्नमेंट हैज यूज प्लेस ऑफ ड्रोन वी कैन यूज दू एज यस मैम सो ऑन द ऑन द वी कैन से दैट ऑन द प्लेस ऑफ ड्रोन्स वी कैन यूज यू एज और बोथ आर दिम मैम बोथ आर ऑलमोस्ट सेम कॉन्सेप्ट आई एम नॉट एक्जैक्टली अवेयर दिकल बिटवीन ड्रोन एंड यू एज Ma'am, uh, I am not uh, exactly aware about the technical difference between both, but I am just referring the application where it might be used. Okay, and uh, have you heard about the uh, HAPS, High Altitude Pseudo Satellites? Uh, yes, ma'am. There was news regarding it a few that? days back. Sorry, ma'am, I am okay. not able uh, to recall. Okay, you are aware about the Vyomitra? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, how Vyomitra is helpful, especially in our Gaganyaan mission? Ma'am, uh, it is a robotic simulation that we have sent, and uh, in future manned mission, uh, we will be able to predict the exact condition that is happening in the space. So, in that regard, it is very uh, helpful for us. Okay, and uh, how can we see Gaganyaan mission? Ma'am, uh, in future that uh, we will be sending it, but there are few of the challenges. Uh, the first challenge is with respect to launch vehicle. because our launch vehicle is uh, not having much flights so that is a problematic thing second uh, for training of our uh, astronauts and other than that emer uh, emergency food supplies in the space that we are dependent in other countries and third is with respect to reentry of the vehicle it is in the testing phase and fourth is uh, re with respect to training of our navies uh, in the uh, arabian sea or uh, bay of bengal so these four are the constraint ma'am okay Okay, so uh, is a uh, drone is helpful, especially in the disaster management, which we can see in the especially hilly areas like Uttar Khand, Himachal Pradesh. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it can be helpful. How it can, how it can helpful? Ma'am, uh, for supplying uh, for uh, emergency supply in during the disaster like situation, drone can be helpful. And other than that, rescue and relief mission can also be uh, done by drones. I I think. Okay. Okay. Now uh, tell me, especially ISRO in the context of ISRO. so how can you see our space technology program as compared to others like nasa like uh, other ma'am uh, first uh, i want to tell about the positives of isro like uh, isro focus on the cost effectiveness of its mission isro focus on the res uh, reverse engineering kind of thing and it isro is right now promoting the private sector players in the space industry and uh, if we will talk about the if we will talk about the challenges then first important challenge is with respect to funding because isro has a 1.5 billion dollar fund whereas nasa has 19 billion dollar fund second uh, our private sector participation is very limited so isro is indulging in various activities other than the research and development kind of thing third important thing is with respect to resources that space have like uh, isro have only two active launch vehicle whereas nasa has five active launch vehicle so these are the positives and uh, challenges with respect to isro ma'am okay okay my last question to you uh, right now what is the biggest challenge in uttarakhand especially in context of women uh, ma'am uh, first important challenge is with respect to increasing the frequency and intensity of the disasters in the recent time second is the distress migration that uh, we can see that more than 1800 ghost villages are present in uttarakhand and third uh, uh, third these are related to the women of uttarakhand yes ma'am these issues are related to the women of uttarakhand uh, sorry ma'am actually i i am talking about the biggest challenge of women which is related to women in uttarakhand Not talking about the disaster management. Uh, sorry, ma'am. Okay. That was a mistake. Oh, uh, ma'am. Uh, with respect to women, the uh, important challenge, uh, the, uh, the crucial challenges will be first is the uh, uh, lack of accessibility towards the uh, health and education in the last mile areas. This is the biggest challenge. In Uttarakhand. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. Thank you, Thank sir. You, okay, Sandeep. Um, <clears throat> do you think creation of Uttarakhand from UP? was beneficial for this state yes sir uh, it was beneficial for the state okay how sir uh, first as uh, the it was a historical demand because uttarakhand has unique uh, unique geography and the 
uh, hilly versus plain dispute was there so it got it autonomy and second in terms of economy now uttarakhand has uh, uttarakhand gsdp is around 3.3 lakh crore and other than that our per capita income has also been increased third we are for, we are developing as per own uh, requirements uh, like we are focusing on the tourism that it is a biggest source of employment or uh, economic activities in uttarakhand can you tell me something in terms of literacy health education yes sir Sir, uh, in literacy, uh, we are uh, currently 80% uh, literacy rate in uh, Uttarakhand. And in terms of health, uh, there are few of the challenges, but uh, we are growing in uh, our health sector also. And in, in terms of employment opportunity, we can say that Uttarakhand manufacturing sector is almost 49% that is providing higher employment opportunity to our youth. So in all these areas, you mean to say that you are uh, Uttarakhand is doing much better than UP, is it? Sir, I am not comparing it with UP because the UP has larger resources, its size is huge. But after uh, getting a separate uh, state, it has developed in its sense, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, are you, uh, you might be aware of socio-economic caste census, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, if suppose we implement SECC in Uttarakhand, will it have some positive effects? Yeah, it, it will become a mere political tool, like how it is being perceived as of now. Sir, uh, it can have a positive effect because uh, we can say that there are various a uh, lot of diversities that present in Uttarakhand. So uh, it will get benefited uh, in terms of socially, politically and economically to the vulnerable sections like tribals are there and other than that scheduled caste uh, peoples are there. So it will be benefited for them. It uh, may be how will it benefit them? Like sir, uh, if we will be formulating the poverty related schemes, mm -hmm. so based on the data analysis, we can uh, formulate better a better targeting, scheme. targeting you mean to say? Yes sir. Okay. Uh, can you tell me, uh, what is electronic vehicles infrastructure in India? Are we equipped enough for adopting electronic vehicles on a mass scale? Sir, uh, like recently government has launched the national uh, electric mobility mission plan 2030 mm -hmm. and it uh, it has target it has set targeted that uh, we will be implementing 30 20 to 30 percent of electric vehicle penetration by 2030 and other than that uh, we have also uh, launched fame scheme by the government mm -hmm. and in gst uh, tax rate has also been cut from 12 percent to 5 percent mm -hmm. and fourth important thing is that uh, our kabil uh, consortium is also uh, acquiring uh, lithium reserve in foreign countries mm -hmm. so uh, this is the positives where we are growing but uh, uh, penetrating electric vehicle have uh, also a lot of challenges the first challenge is with respect to the availability of lithium here we are dependent on other countries uh, second uh, is with respect to the local input that we are using in our electric vehicle mm -hmm. that is almost around 35 mm percent -hmm. third challenge is with respect to the charging infrastructure and mm -hmm. that is limited presence in uh, in our india okay okay uh, See, whenever a question is asked in terms of elect, be it anything. So if you are highlighting positives, just restrict to positives and you can say, though it has some challenges, which needs to be worked on. Let me ask so that it will create more avenues for new questions. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. So you are interested in gymming also? Yes, sir. So uh, can you tell me what is your workout routine? Do you go to gym every day? Uh, sir, uh, in four days a week, I mm -hmm. go to gym mm -hmm. and uh, I, earlier I was doing a single exercise, single day, per, uh, si single exercise per day. Mm -hmm. But now I am, uh, sh I have shifted to the two body exercise per day. Okay. Okay. So what specific exercises are you doing? Sir, uh, I am doing, I am working in a uh, few uh, muscles of my body like uh, chest part or uh, back part and other than that biceps, triceps is there and third one is with respect to legs. So these are the regular things and other than the few cardio exercise also do I do. So what is the entire uh, workout routine in terms of when we plan on to do high intensity workout? How is it different than the regular workout? Sir, uh, in high intensity workout, uh, first is with respect to the high intensity workout, uh, more includes the cardio related exercise than the normal workout. In, in high intensity workout, our diet plan uh, should also be different than that of the regular uh, exercises. So these two points. Are Recently, we have seen there is increasing uh, use of supplements, steroids for people who are going for gym. Uh, 
yes sir and there is inherent craze in terms of muscle building and all those different areas so how do you perceive these supplements are they necessary or are they essential what is your opinion sir uh, these supplements are not that much essential for our body because if we will be having a regular diet and if we will intake the food uh, vegetables and fruit that is available in the market then we can uh, we can uh, we can uh, completely uh, we don't need any such kind of supplement and other than that uh, we should have a regular diet plan for that and uh, largely this thing happens due to the wider advertisement kind of things uh, through the social media or any such channels okay recently we have seen there are increasing number of heart attacks for people who are doing high intensity workouts or pe- normal people when they are doing cardio exercises in the gym so can you tell me what is the reason for this sir uh, the first Uh, reason is that uh, people are doing high high intensity workout but uh, they are not following regular diet second uh, when pe- when people take uh, these type of supplements then it's also affect to their body third uh, there might be there are for a few of the instances where uh, they already the person may be diseased and he might not know about that and if he is doing or if he or she is doing the high intensity workout it can aggravate that particular disease and led to the uh, cardiac arrest or such kind of thing Uh, there are also claims that covid vaccine is playing a nuisance role here do you believe in this sir uh, i have limited knowledge regarding this i may not be sure that whether it is affecting or not okay okay thank you thank you sir here we are taking about 40 45 minutes there you will get only 25 minutes yes sir so you had to be attentive only for 25 minutes so that uh, your worry will not be there otherwise uh, you are fantastic and uh, last time you got 150 sir this time i personally feel that you will not get less than 175 180 all right we show all the very best just look into the question carefully yes sir formulate your answer and give a short reply and that reply should reflect your view points if possible yes sir keep a smiling face in the interview yes, good sir. luck sir uh, i just yeah. want to ask one question sir in terms of communication means uh, you it... appear to be little fast in your speed but when is your interview is on 27th of february so enough time is not there you will not be able to change that yes sir so jo bhi aapka natural hai chalne diye usko it's fine be natural be confident and don't be scared of this interview or you are already faced this interview who was the chairman of your board earlier Uh, sir uh, shrimati smita nagraj mein oh she was and means she is little negative <laughs> ab wo chali rahi hai to uska dar aap ko nahi hai she has uh, retired now yes sir so all the very best she used to my joint secretary in mr dipan thank you sir all the best thank you sir